Okay, so our first thing I do is give it a little puff of smoke at the entrance. This one has a small entrance. On the other hives, you can see a hive has a, an out exhaust and an intake. If you puff and it goes out the exhaust side, then there's you haven't got any smoke into the hive. So you want to do a gentle puff and make sure the smoke gets sucked into, into the hive. And this one looks like it might have a... Let me see what's happening right here. It's good. Yeah, it's got a screen bottom is closed. Now you can't really tell with this one. The other hives that I've looked at, really, I don't see another one from the entrance. But it's pretty obvious whether the smoke coats in or it goes out. Get rid of that thing. Okay, now gently remove the hive cover. And while the hive cover's on, put a little smoke. Put this upside down. Now you have a place that you can put a, a box down on without crushing any bees. Gently dry this up. A bit of smoke underneath here. So give it a second. I bend my knees, let the weight down so I'm not putting weight on my back as I go over. Now, the only bees in the hive that are interested in defending the hive are the bees on the periphery of the hive, the entrance or on the outside. You don't need to worry about the bees on the inner, inner, inner part of the combs. What I'm going to do now is any bees that are facing me, I want to make them turn around. If the bees are looking at you, they're aware of you. If they're not looking at you, they're not aware of you. You don't want your bees to ever be aware of you. So watch for their heads. If they're looking at you, they're aware of you. That means you got to put a little more smoke on. See all those bees? Yeah, they line up to look at you. They all line up to look at you. Yeah. No smoke. <laughs> now they're going to stop looking. You don't have to blast inside. You're just putting it on the periphery. Just the peripheral bees. Those are the only guard bees. The rest of the bees are not going to be bothered, bothered by you. Okay. So now I'm going to give myself a working room. I'm going to pry all 10 frames over to one side. <coughs> Pull the first comb out. When you go to lift, if you lift like this, you're using a little small muscle in the small of your back and you will pull your back. Okay, I guarantee it. Focus. So I do all my lifting with this finger right here. I push down with this finger like that or like that and the finger does all the lifting. Now I put that finger under here and then grab a frame like this. There's no frame in there? No, it's just oh, the foundation. There's no foundation. No, sorry. It's no the frame. Foundation. Is there a right. trick of doing that without being stuck? Yeah, that was the trick I just showed you. So, so if you start to feel a bee here, you let go and you're not going to drop it. So you got to fit your finger underneath the end. Sure, sure. Okay. So I want to show you the, the shake here. Um, the shake, hold your finger like this and the thumb over the top with a, walk, a separation about an inch, inch and a half. The thumb never touches the top. I'm going to go down, bang, up, bang, down, bang. Three bangs. Ready? That was three bangs. Three bangs. Without drop. Without drop. Yes, this, this is really a light one. Three bangs. There's bands on my head. Okay, that will shake me straight off. If you put your thumb down, you get this. And you throw the queen off into the bushes. Okay? So the shake is just straight like this. I'm going to do a shake in a minute with the same bees and you can see how to do it. That's a practice. I've got too many bees on the top bars. I don't, don't want to inspect the hive if there's bees on the top bars. Get all the bees. See how I'm using the wind? And I'm not trying to hit them hard, just really gentle. Those bees off the top bars. Okay, so this colony right now has a tight cluster which indicates it's most likely queen, right? Take a look, and we're going to look for nutrition here now. Okay, we got plenty of bee bread stored right here. See the, the bright colored bee bread? Mm -hmm. And these combs are all drawn out full of nectar. So this colony is just about ready to have the second box put onto it. Okay, so now I'm going to start looking for the queen. She's sometimes in the outer frame, but not likely. 50% of the time, the queen will be on a side of the frame facing you. 50% of the time she'll be on the side of the frame facing no, away from no. you. So if you look at the next frame while it's still in the hive, half the time you spot the queen while she's still inside the box. The first few seconds are when you spot the queen. After about four seconds on a side, it's much harder to spot her because she moves. Too many bees in the top? A little bit of smoke? Is the, uh, the Harmon putting on multiple boxes early in the season, like having uh, a deep and two mediums, for example? On a strong colony? Yeah, it's just a, it's a, a little. Colony. On a new one? Oh, because uh, they don't won't work sideways. 
They won't draw the comb side, it'll chimney up the middle. Okay. Okay, so what we see right here is a very nice solid brood pattern. That means everything's healthy, the queen's laying well, shredded by a nice band of bee bread. I'm done with the inspection. That's all you need to know. Okay, we'll go in a little bit more and take a look. Okay. Uh, and she is laying out here. So she was just laying here. So take a double look, make sure I didn't miss that queen because there's eggs in all these cells out here. Okay, so you want to see it? Anybody need to see an egg? We saw the last one. Okay, great. I don't drown them with smoke. I use just enough smoke to keep them not looking at me and off the top bars. There's the queen. So the queen, you usually, I'll usually spot the queen in the first couple of seconds. Don't point at her. If you do, you take away the joy of discovery from everybody else. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. Oh, I see. Nice. Okay. Oh, yeah. So you're gonna, yeah. Some moves move fast, some move slow. You're going to approach her from behind. And grab her by her two wings like this. Now you can come up to the queen, you, you stroke her legs down, you grab her around the head and the thorax, and she will bend her abdomen down, and now you can easily paint her thorax if you oh want. Oh my goodness. Then you can take her back like this, blow on the paint, then you take her back, and you put her back on a comb, watching her carefully. Sometimes a queen will just roll over like a possum and play dead. So you gotta let it, in about 20 seconds she'll come to. That one's starting to, see she's starting, she almost played dead. I want to make sure that she's back, moving, and that her bees are not jumping her. Sometimes the bees will jump their own queen. No. It's, it's not, no. If she takes off running, they'll jump her. What, what does that mean, they jump her? They try to kill her. <gasps> Do you try to put the queen back where you found her before? That's not critical. Not okay. the same. Okay, so now before she gets over by an edge where I might crush her, I'm going to carefully put this down. Notice I bring the frames in close, yeah. push them down, so that if you take a frame, put it in like this, and shove it over, you have a good chance of killing the queen when she tries running around the outside. Oh, okay. okay, so now we're going to do the alcohol wash. Any concern about like any odor that might be on your hand when you do that at all? Or? I'd use good hygiene in the bathroom. Good enough. <laughs> Um, I haven't particularly noticed that, but I also noticed that I have a son. If the two of us walk through a yard, he's going to get twice the stings that I will. And so I, I, I'm guessing it's, it, it, I'm not sure whether it's color of the skin or odor or what it is, but it frustrates the hell of me. It pisses them off actually because I never get really get stung out there. One 16 ounce cup, one 16 ounce cup with a hot knife, three quarters of an inch cut off. Okay. Piece of tool fabric. Wrestling with a the ballerina. There we go. Okay, bite wash cup ready to go. Okay. Okay. Rubbing alcohol, or if you have a high class exhibit or, or visitors, great goose vodka. <laughs> I have one of those. <laughs> Loves high class vodka. Okay. Now we need. 300 young bees. Okay. And let's see, who would like to help me with the bee demonstration right here? somebody else and that person will punch you in the nose afterwards. Well your face is covered, you'll be safe. Oh, okay. Shake. Come on, ready? Old bees fly home. Old bees fly home. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Do not squeeze your hand tightly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, while you're holding this for a second, I'm going to ask for 300 volunteers. 300 volunteers, please. You give them a chance. Scrape them off a little. Leave me? No, I'm going to do it in a second. Okay. I've got my sample now. <laughs> I gave them a chance. I asked for volunteers. There's a right. bunch of a lot of sugar or something on okay. my. Go loose. Okay. Go ahead and check that. Make sure they don't go up your sleeve. Okay, you're good. You got one right here. Okay, go ahead and step, you step back. Thank you. You bet. Yeah. Thank you. Good job. Yay. I guess. all over my hand now. Okay, this hive's had yeah. enough going through. Yeah, well, I'm a little concerned about that this very minute. Now, as I approach right here, because I'm sliding sideways, there's a I always do prying and very much control. Let those bees get out of there. Come on, get out of there. There we go. I'm gonna, don't want to pinch them. There we go. If they're wadded up on the on the frame, I just shake them off so they don't they don't uh, get crushed. Now before you push that. Notice instead of pushing, where I have no control. Hold on a second. I make sure that I pry. With prying, you have total control. This one, uh, what's going on there in that one without a foundation, is that looking good? That they will fill that whole thing out and it will be correct? Looks pretty good to Straight. me. Straight. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know what the hell he's doing. Looks like, oh, it's, looks like he's doing foundationless beekeeping. Exactly. Okay. I don't, I don't recommend that. You can do whatever you want. People, you can make beekeeping as difficult as you like. <laughs> That's like bending a hive tool. I want to get all the propolis squeezed out between from between those end bars, and then see I've got now an inch of working space. I'm going to center that workspace back. Next time I go back in this hive, it'll be easy to get an inch of working space. Okay. Biggest mistake you can do is to one of the biggest is to leave space between the frames. The bees will fill them full of propolis, and then you lose your working space. I'm not going to slide any bees out of the way. Come in kitty corner like this. Now, if you slowly twist, let them get out of the way, you won't crush any bees. Okay. Now, you make sure the bees are covered with, you can see clear alcohol above it. That means that there's not too much pressure. And you swirl around just enough that you see the bottom bees tumble. If they're not moving, the mites can't fall through. Most of the mites have already fallen. Whoever's hives these are likes to spend a lot of money, and some people say useless money, on their bees. And they use a feeder that I would never, that I personally would never use. Tom, go to my first year beekeeping page. Well, I'm not giving you recommendations. You do whatever makes you guys happy. I don't give any recommendations. Go ahead and dump them out on the ground. The alcohol will flash off tonight. The stones come in, eat them all, they'll get recycled back. Okay. Who will eat them all? Skunks. Oh, okay. Well, you're welcome to it if you like. Well, I just don't want to draw skunks into my yard. You're not going to draw any skunks. If, they're they're <laughs> there. if you're a beekeeper, you're going to have they're skunks. They're just hiding from me. Oh, okay. So here's the best idea. I do, because we have skunks all around our house. You don't charge out the door in the middle of the night. You hesitate at the door, and you look for black and white moving, okay? If they raise their tail and turn their back towards you... Bad news. No, no, no. Just try not to approach them too 